Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, I want to talk about my thoughts of Diablo 4 Season 2, and I want to break this video down into five categories. We're going to talk about the great things, the good things, neutral things, bad, and ugly. This season kind of has a bit of it all, and so let's start by diving into some of the positive things. So I'm going to start with the great category, and we're going to kind of end on the ugly. The first thing that I think is absolutely great about Diablo 4 Season 2 is these new endgame bosses, and of course all these materials that we have to gather. It just feels like we kind of have some mid-game, end-game content now, things that we can do when we hit level 100. Prior to Season 2, hitting level 100 just kind of felt like the end of the game, at least it did for me, and I know that that was a kind of common sentiment among players in the community. And so it's nice now to hit 100 and, and feel like I'm not done. I can go out and gather up all of these materials, farm these bosses. Of course, you've got the target farming of items now, which is really nice. And we don't see as many uniques out in the open world. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it feels like when I'm just kind of grinding out in the world or in nightmare dungeons, I'm not getting uniques at the same rate that I was before, but rather I'm a little more encouraged to go target farm them and engage with these bosses. The next thing that I love about this season is the open world is once again relevant. The monsters are not trailing us by five levels anymore. We can actually fight same level content and then of course in the hell tides fight monsters that are a little bit higher, but it actually feels like we should go out. We should do the Legion events, we should do the Tree of Whispers, Helltide when it's up, and even the Blood Harvest. The game just really isn't about constantly farming Nightmare Dungeons anymore, and so we really engage with a lot more of the game that Blizzard designed. I mean, they wanted to make this an open world game, and then they kind of took that away and just forced us into Nightmare Dungeons. It's nice to be able to engage with all sorts of content now. To add on to that just a little bit, it's nice that we have to gather these materials to fight the bosses. Personally, I wasn't a huge fan of just killing Mephisto a hundred times in Diablo 2 until I finally got the item that I wanted, but rather now I have to go out and engage with all sorts of different parts of the game to go fight those bosses to get the items that I want. Now the next great thing that I really like is just the Blood Harvest. I, I think this was a really good addition to the game. It's nice that it's up 100% of the time, and it's really nice that we could do our Tree of Whispers. It's also a little bit threatening when you're kind of still getting your build together and you fight those really intense elites. The gear here is also really good, and so it's a nice way to feel like you're not falling behind because we level up really fast now. And so it's nice to have a place to go that we can just get gear really quickly. The next thing that I'm a huge fan of is world bosses being on a three and a half hour timer instead of a six hour timer. This actually allows them to spawn at different times each day. It kind of alternates everything by 30 minutes every single day. And so people who work all sorts of different schedules can actually engage with world bosses once again, especially people who can only maybe play the game for like an hour every few days, they'll get a chance to engage with a world boss. And the last really nice thing about this season is that they're actually going to be adding more content. I kind of felt like we already got everything we were going to get, and then at BlizzCon they had announced the Abattoir of Zir, and then a holiday event coming up. Now I'm actually really excited for both of these. The Abattoir, of course, going to be something that's a little bit more difficult, something to really push our characters to the limit, and the holiday event, depending on how it's done, could be really nice as well. Diablo 3 Season 27 in December of last year had introduced a holiday event where people could get the Cosmic Wings. And this brought so many people back to the game. It was it was absolutely packed. And so hopefully they do something kind of fun like that with this holiday event as well to really encourage people to come back to the season. Okay, so transitioning out of the great and into the good things. So these are still definitely positives for the game. The first one that I want to start with is glyph leveling speed. If I'm not incorrect, I think it was increased by 19% which is good. Now the only reason I put this in good instead of great is because I have just a minor complaint about it. I kind of like having things that we have to grind and grind and grind to get. I know that's not really for everybody, but it is an action RPG and that's kind of what it's all about. So it's really convenient to get these glyphs leveled up faster and I ultimately think this is a good thing, but it kind of takes away from the grind a little bit, but ultimately still a positive. In all honesty, I probably think this is a bit of a hot take because I do think that most people would argue that this is a great change. Next up is the vampiric powers. These are just so much more engaging than malignant hearts were. There just feels like there's there's so much more that you can do. It's, it's not like put the barber on, destroy the game. 
you can actually mess around with a lot of these and, and some of them are really good for killing bosses and some of them are really good just for nightmare dungeons or, or farming in general so it's kind of cool to be able to mix this up at any time next up for the good things are the malignant rings once again another thing that i was not expecting something being added to the game kind of in the middle of the season it's it's nice to see things like that because they're exceeding my expectations in that regard i kind of thought we just had what we were going to get for season two and so it's really nice to see these added to the game now the most notable of these malignant rings has got to be the necromancer one everybody was all about the auto corp skills that we had in season one and so it's really cool to see that they took that feedback and implemented a way for us to continue to do that lastly for the good things it kind of feels like this season every single type of build is is pretty much viable to get to level 100 you can kind of just do it how you want play a crazy build play a bad build they all kind of work to get you into that end game content this is kind of tied into a con later down the line which we'll talk about but ultimately this is a nice thing allowing us to have this freedom to play all sorts of different builds okay now moving into section three of this video i'm going to talk about the things that are a little bit neutral they have pros and cons and it's kind of hard to just categorize them as one or the other number one is durial group farming it's kind of frustrating that solo players kind of feel forced to engage with this and, and on top of that the social elements of the game are, are not really worked out all that well i mean actually building a group in game is a little bit difficult and this also kind of encourages us to go to third-party websites or, or Discord servers to find groups because it just doesn't feel like we have what we need in the game to get a group going. On top of that, you also have players who will scam. I haven't been scammed yet, and I'm very thankful for that, but of course, generally, you do a one-to-one -one rotation on these Durial materials when you're summoning him. And so three people may summon him in a four-player group, and then the fourth player will just bounce with all the free loot that they got. If Blizzard had implemented some kind of group finder system to allow us to get together, and then up front, we all have to donate our materials at once, and then we get four Durial runs, that would kind of be nice because it would take away the scamming potential. But at the same time, I'm just not sure how much I love how incentivized we are to do this in a group. Duriel was announced as an uber boss, and so just slamming him over and over in a four-player group kind of just makes a joke out of him. And I like the idea that he's kind of a um, pre-pinnacle content boss that you would do on your own to test your character. And so I have kind of mixed feelings about this. Let me know how you feel about it down below in the comments. Moving on to the next one, I want to talk about leveling speed. I think that the vast majority of the community would put this in the good or great category, but I'm going to put it in neutral. It's my video. And so my reasoning for that, though, being I kind of like the slow roll games. I was a huge fan of classic World of Warcraft. I like the leveling experience to kind of be this long journey and not necessarily something you just hammer out very quickly. But this is a really good change for casual players, and I, I know that most people really want to hit level 100. One complaint that I kind of have about it, though, is if we think about Diablo 2, for example, we're not generally hitting max level, right? We can get into the 90s, and every day when you log on, you're going to go do some, like, magic finding or something, for example. Even if you don't find anything, you get just that little bit of experience towards your next level. And so it kind of always gives you this sense of progression that I kind of feel like the game is missing right now because it's so easy and so fast to get to max level. Also, comparing this to Diablo 3, where we had the Paragon leveling system, a massively flawed end game concept but nevertheless each day when you get online you're making some amount of progress even if you don't get new gear but of course it is convenient it's it's nice to feel like i can just switch builds at any time i like i already have three level 100s on the seasonal realm because getting there is just so quick the first character was maybe a little bit slower but now i can just constantly upgrade my gear as i'm leveling up i can save aspects and getting to 100 is just such a fast process so whenever i want to play a build i don't feel like i have this huge journey to conquer first so that's kind of nice on to the next thing in the neutral category i want to talk about the timers i constantly feel like i'm chasing something in this game it feels a little bit hectic at times, right? If I'm doing a Nightmare Dungeon, but I'm on Helltides.com, Legion's about to be up in five minutes, it's like, ah, can I get the dungeon finished first? Can I get there on time? And then, oh good, you know, Helltide's about to start in a couple minutes. It feels like I'm always chasing a timer. Maybe I'm a lazy gamer, but uh, 
I kind of like just being able to do what I want when I want, and of course I can still do that, but if I really want to play the game optimally, I, I feel like I'm kind of forced to chase these different things at different times the moment that they're up. Granted, I do think that this is nice to add direction to maybe casual players or new players who don't really know what to do and when to do it. It's nice for them to just kind of get these hints of where to go and when. Alrighty folks, moving on to the bad parts. Not quite ugly, but definitely not good. First off, the Season Journey quest was bugged at launch, and I actually encountered this, and I was watching Rax's stream at the time, and most of the chat was talking about it too. A very early part of the Season Quest was just bugged, and it wouldn't give you direction of where to go next, you, you couldn't engage with it anymore, and so this was kind of just rough for a start. I, I feel like this could have been prevented. I mean, this is like the big part of Season 2 is we're all gonna go do this quest and like right off the bat it was bugged so kind of left a bad taste in my mouth next up is the frequent disconnects that people were experiencing at the start of the season they were mildly frustrating for me but i know that people were playing hardcore and it was massively frustrating for them especially when they lost their characters my hardcore not like this not like this hit all the buttons so hopefully i kill them no not my hardcore please surely my character is alive still your character has not finished being saved by their current game or your account is otherwise busy. Wait, our season journey reverted. Wait, hold on. We had them completed and now it says it's not. We, after re-logging in, it actually rode us back. What's going on? I can't get off my horse. Dude, am I getting lagged out again? Okay, gotta relaunch the game. Your falling character has gone the hall of your- Bro, come on, dude. I let- then not like this, bro. I don't even. It, like, we log in from the one. We, the one disconnects. Not good enough. And on top of that, the battle pass was also bugged at launch. Where. I don't particularly care that much about anything in the battle pass except for the smoldering ashes, but not being able to get those to increase my XP was a bit of an inconvenience. Now this was fixed relatively quickly, but still kind of just made the start of the season feel a little bit rough. And during day two of the season, there were forced crashes, there were no server side announcements to say, hey, we're going to shut down your game. Everybody just got crashed on day two, resulting in more hardcore deaths. If I'm being honest, I, I'm kind of blown away by this. The fact that we don't get some kind of announcement down here in the chat, something to say, hey, get somewhere safe, it was just like, nah, everybody's getting crashed right now, good luck. There were a couple other server resets as well, and just no announcements at all for, for any of them, and we know that Blizzard is plenty capable of this. They had them in Diablo 2 way back in the day. They have them in World of Warcraft, and so it's really odd that we don't see anything like that in D4 to give us a heads up. Next up, this is actually something that I had talked about in a prior video, but I still feel like the game is a bit discouraging to new players, when we go into a season, we have all of our Altars of Lilith already, which is fantastic. We have our Renown done, and I kind of feel like if you want to bring your friend into the game and you tell them, oh, hey, don't start until the season comes out, and then they start the game, they just have so much catching up to do. I think it's nice that they should go through Renown once. It's, it's not terrible to do once. It's kind of nice to experience the whole game. But the Altars of Lilith, I, I think, are just this massive inconvenience where you kind of just spend multiple hours looking up the locations online and trying to chase them down. I'd like to see Altars of Lilith kind of just taken out of the game. Ultimately, I just want more people to get interested in this game, and maybe the Altars of Lilith are for some people. When I had mentioned it in a prior video, some people actually said they enjoyed hunting them down but I think in general, most people didn't. Maybe as a compromise, it would be cool to see the Altars of Lilith actually come up every season, maybe even in new locations, but they don't offer something like permanent stats. Perhaps something like cosmetics, uh, you know, mounts, things of that nature that for the people who really like the exploration aspect could still get that enjoyment out of it, but new players aren't necessarily forced to engage with it or otherwise suffer the consequences of having an underwhelming character. Next up on the bad, and this is a partial hot take, I did not like that the world bosses were guaranteeing all players level 925 weapons. Now this is another reason that leveling is just incredibly fast this season, is the moment I was 60, I would hop into world tier 4, go do a world boss, 
get a level 925 weapon and completely steamroll the rest of the game. Now, I don't feel like it's necessarily problematic that they drop eye level 925 items, but the fact that they were always guaranteeing a weapon was kind of a problem. And I have actually done a few runs now where it, I haven't gotten a weapon, and so this may be actually something that they've already fixed, but the damage was kind of already done. I mean, most players had got to World Tier 4, got their 925 item, and it just kind of is what it is. Again, that could be something that players enjoy, but not necessarily for me. I think that harms character progression. Our weapon is such an essential part of our damage, and just guaranteeing us a max level weapon is, is kind of just a bit much because all progression from that point forward feels a little bit more underwhelming. Alrighty, so remember earlier in the video when I had said that it was nice, all builds are viable to kind of grind out to level 100. Well, the reason for that is that the game is just too easy right now. Uber Lilith is, is free. The, every single class in the game, you can look up YouTube videos of people essentially one-shotting her or killing her before you really have to deal with any of the mechanics of the fight. Nightmare Dungeon Tier 100 is also completely free. You get to max level, you go in, and it just kind of feels like you're already ready for it. Even if you don't have your character completely finished yet, the game just felt like it got scaled way back in difficulty. Not that it was particularly very hard before, but now it's just an absolute steamroll. But of course, I do have to mention that the Avatar of Zir is coming out. We haven't seen it, but according to Blizzard, this is going to be very difficult content. And so this might be something to kind of fix this problem. Alrighty, next up. This one is very frustrating. Metamorphosis as a vampiric power is generally better at level one than it is at level three. Unfortunately, I've already leveled mine up to two. I'm not gonna take it to three, but the reason for this being that we have Tibalt's Will. So with these pants, we get the 40% damage multiplier, which is really nice when we become unstoppable. But on top of the 40% additional damage, we also gain 50 of our primary resource. Now this is the problem. If you level up Metamorphosis more and more, you're actually gimping yourself in regards to the resource. Because when we look at Metamorphosis, the more and more that we level it up, we actually become unstoppable for a longer period of time. Now, although this sounds like a good thing, it also means that we can't become unstoppable again. While you're unstoppable, you cannot become unstoppable. So basically, every two seconds at a level one metamorphosis, I can get 50 resource by becoming unstoppable. When I level it up, then it's three. And then at level three, it becomes four seconds. And so it's two times as worse. That's twice as much lost resource when it comes to the interaction between these two items. And Tibalt's Will is just so good. Most builds are using it right now because the multiplier is, is just insane. And of course, it's not just the multiplier, it's that resource too. And so if you haven't leveled up Metamorphosis yet, I would recommend that you don't. If you have, it's probably not the end of the world, but it may really start to show in the Abattoir of Zir when content becomes more difficult. Now, I don't really feel like this is something that absolutely just bricks your character by any means. I've seen a lot of people level up the Metamorphosis to three and they do just fine. And so I wouldn't worry about it too much if you've leveled yours up but it is something that just kind of feels a little bit bad. I, I don't think this was intended by Blizzard. I'm almost certain that it wasn't, but it kind of feels strange that it even happened in the first place. Okay, and lastly, let's go ahead and talk about the ugly. And the very first thing that I have to start with is that the season launch itself was delayed by almost two hours. A lot of people take time off for the start of a season. I know that I started my shift a lot earlier that day so that I could actually be off in time for the season. I was incredibly tired, but I really wanted to get off to a good start and kind of live in that hype of a new season. But then of course with the delay, it was just kind of a buzzkill. Next up, about mid late October, I think I noticed it on October 22nd, there was an announcement on the Blizzard launcher stating that there was an item dupe and so trading was disabled. And this wasn't something that was necessarily fixed incredibly fast. If I'm not mistaken, I, I believe that announcement was still on the Battle.net launcher for about three to four days. Now, although this got resolved, on November 8th, there was another announcement on the Battle.net launcher that once again trading was disabled because of an item and gold dupe this time. Of course, I'm sure that a ton of players got banned, but the damage is already done. Once gold has been duped, it gets sent out everywhere. You know, they're not going to keep it on this account. 
that they know is going to get banned. And so this kind of trashes the economy. And we had this happen in season one. It's really unfortunate to see again. This is kind of a common thing in action RPGs, but I'm, I'm hoping that Blizzard of all companies has the resources to stop something like this. It's really unfortunate to see this for two seasons in a row because next season we're going to have leaderboards. Something like a gold or an item dupe is, is largely going to influence who wins. Even though the item dupers are going to get banned, they can give those items to other players and give them pretty massive advantages when it comes to the leaderboards. And it's, it's also just kind of frustrating because when you grind out a ton of gold and, and you want to start trading for items, but gold has just been duped and duped and duped and it has no value anymore, that's really problematic. Now, I will note real quick that I, I don't think that we're at that point. I, I don't think that gold is absolutely useless. I do see people, of course, selling durial runs and, and things of that nature. But when gold gets duped, your gold becomes less valuable because the economy does just get flooded and it makes it harder for legitimate players to afford things. Next up for the ugly, and I, I think this is probably the ugliest thing of the entire season, is invisible living steel chests. This is so frustrating and it, it blows my mind that this has not been fixed yet. Mystery chests have never been invisible and so it's kind of hard to put together in my head why these tortured chests that have the living steel are invisible and they just don't spawn in. This is forcing players to either log out and back in to re-instance themselves or town portal and then go back in but the problem is is that doesn't even work every time and, and I've had multiple hell tides and have seen people complaining about this online where I have to port out and back in maybe eight to ten times when it's really bad. Especially in an event when you're fighting against a timer like the Helltide, losing all that time just staring at a loading screen over and over because of course each trip is back and then in. So you're seeing two loading screens each time you have to do this. So if, if you're doing eight or 10 times, that's 16 to 20 loading screens that you're just staring at. Meanwhile, the Helltide timer is just ticking down and down. So if you're not using a resource like helltides.com where you can see the location of the chest, you might never find them. You may explore the entire area and never come across the living steel chest because they just didn't spawn into your instance. I genuinely feel like this needs to be fixed and, and I don't feel like there's an excuse for it not being fixed yet. In fact, this got so bad that on Helltides.com, where you can vote yes or no, I see the chest here or I don't, the actual locations of the um, tortured chests were being downvoted more than upvoted, even though that's technically where they were supposed to spawn. And players are getting very frustrated about this, and, and it definitely shows when you look at things like this. Next up, I'd like to show you a clip of a podcast pretty early in the season where we were talking about vampiric powers. I did, I did, like I said, really like the season mechanic, though. I think it was really well done and added a lot. But I'm also a little surprised. So at League Star, I don't know if you guys know this, but the vampire powers went past level 3. And I wonder if that was like really? a last minute hotfix because i had a guy in my Maybe chat and actually several people that had some of the powers at level five and we what? didn't know how high they went so they had he had spammed hemomancy and his yeah. was doing 120 percent of his health as physical damage now apparently when these players did log out and back in their level four and five vampiric powers did get pulled back to level three but this is pretty bad especially at the start of a season where a lot of people kind of have that competitive racing nature Having a level 5 vampiric power that's just one-shotting the whole screen is a very exploitative way of getting ahead. Alright, and the very last thing for the ugly is just how buggy the game is right now. Just in general, my character has gotten stuck so many times. There have been times where I've gone into dungeons and it doesn't trigger the next part of the dungeon to happen. So even if I complete it, I don't get credit. Most notably in Flooded Depths, there is a spot where you're supposed to go down a ladder to trigger the second part of the dungeon. But if you're a barbarian or you're a sorcerer, you can leap or teleport down there and not use the ladder. The problem is, is that the ladder itself is what triggers the second part of the dungeon. So if you don't take that down, 
you're not triggering the second half. So you can go out and destroy all the bells, but you're not gonna actually get credit for completing the dungeon. Ultimately, all these small bugs just kind of add up to one major inconvenience. And so it's hard to just pinpoint one or another, definitely most notably the living steel problem, but altogether kind of problematic. Alrighty, and for those of you who have made it this far, I genuinely appreciate you. Um, the last thing that I would like to note is a few weeks ago, I had made a video stating that Diablo 4 Season 2 was going to be a disaster, and in that video, I was mostly referring to the fact that the patch was just so large, and that Blizzard only does internal testing, and we don't have a public test run like we do in Diablo 3 to work out all these bugs. And I think my prediction came true. We have a ton of bugs. We have, of course, duping again of item and gold, exploits, there, there's just a lot of problems. The game is definitely moving in a positive direction overall. I, I think it's really hard to argue that it isn't, but it would be really nice to see a public test realm, at least in my opinion. Alrighty guys, so I know this was a longer video, so thank you so much for making it to this point. Go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know if you're enjoying season two, if you're hating it, what kind of bugs you're running into, whatever you wanna talk about, I'd love to hear your feedback. As always, I appreciate you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.